VC here. So we're talking about the Garmin 530 versus the Wahoo Roam. If you want to jump right into the side-by-side -side comparison, click go to the timestamp here. But let me try to explain why these aren't, this isn't going to be a biased video. This is supported by competitive cyclists. They gave me both these computers. So this isn't a Wahoo video or a Garmin video. This is a competitive cyclist sponsored video. You can use code VEGANCYCLE15 to get 15% off your first purchase. Some exclusions may apply. But this is why I'm able to pretty much talk freely and openly about each one of these computers and what you might want to know before making the purchase. Because competitive cyclists, they sell both of them. So I ran these side by side on my computer for a week. And I did some videos of it and filmed it and really trying to get the side by side comparison. But what I realized towards the end is that almost everything I didn't like about the Garmin just came down to that it was different. And that this is a Android versus Apple iOS type of argument. If you're a Garmin fanboy, there's nothing I can say that's gonna change you to a Wahoo boy. And every one of these things is gonna be different. What you like might be something I hate. And what is really important to me might not, you might not care about at all. So let's try to jump into this. I'm sure I'm gonna say things and you'd be like, that's not my experience and you're an idiot. And that's fine. Let's just jump into it. But after running side-by-side -side navigation, basically here's my takeaway. One, with nothing loaded, no maps loaded, no routes loaded, I really like the Garmin's ability to tell me at the top where I'm going it says the next road or next crossroad. A side-by-side -side comparison on this though is that the Garmin is a much more detailed map, which means that everything's way thinner. The Wahoo, the roads are bigger. Everything's, even when you zoom in, the Garmin has very thin lines and I didn't like that. It was very hard to see, especially if you were on gravel and bumping about or you're going fast. Uh, I wanna see clear cut lines. Your ability to move around the map via the touchscreen is pretty cool. You can do something similar on the Wahoo. Side by side on this is that the navigation on the Wahoo is amazing because it has LED lights. It has yellow lights indicating a turn's coming up. It will tell you red when you're off your navigation and green when you're on it. That is awesome. Also, when you have navigation up and you're on another page, your workout page, your Strava live segment page, whatever page, the, the navigation pops up from the bottom and indicates with lights. Doesn't take you off that page. The Garmin, and maybe there's a way to change this, but when I'm riding and the next turn is coming up, whatever screen I was looking at, psych, it's gone. Uh, I'm now taken to the navigation page where I'm seeing the whole map and which turn. Now you can cancel that, you can go, you can hit X, but I don't wanna to have to touch my screen. I just don't do that. And so then that was really frustrating, is this, the navigation popping up over the screen that I'd had on. Both of these have a feature as where you can say, take me to. So on the Garmin, it's super easy because it's all touch screen. So on the Garmin, you're gonna to go to navigation, you're gonna to go to create a route, then you're going to take me to, and then you're gonna pin on the map and then load the route. That's kind of neat. Same thing with the Wahoo, it's just done through the phone. And so for me, it's a little bit easier. It's actually less steps through the phone. Um, but both of them have the ability to just say, take me to this spot. Maybe you have no idea where you're going. You just wanna to go to a spot. You can do that. Now, both of them have this dumb thing where it takes you on cycling specific routes or bike approved routes. There used to be, and I couldn't find it for some reason, there used to be a way I could turn that off on the Wahoo and say, don't take me on bike paths. Both of them, when I said take me to the Millers, they had me going this dumb way through an apartment complex that had gates. You couldn't ride through it. So why are you doing that? Both of them did this. Now, again, maybe there's a way to turn that off, but that was super frustrating. And if you're in a place you don't know where you're at, that could get you in a lot of trouble because it could take you down a place that is a brick wall. Happened to me, it took me to a, literally a brick wall. And it's like, keep going. Like I can't. Both of them did this. The next feature that I think is really important is Strava Live segments. Now, you, I think you have to have a paid subscription with Strava to use Strava Live segments, and I don't even know if now 
the way that they've changed Strava, if that's even gonna be compatible anymore. I'm not 100% sure it, that Strava just changed all their stuff like today. But side by side on the Strava Live segments is that you go to Strava, you star a segment, boom, that's it. You, you have to sync, right? You can't just star it there. You have to connect your phone to the computers and then sync. Uh, so far, it looks like the Wahoo is a little bit slower to sync. Everything's a little bit slower on the Wahoo, just period. It's starting up. The Garmin like, starts up in like two seconds and the Wahoo takes 40 seconds to start up. You star your segments. The Wahoo shows you what is close. So you start riding and it says, hey, there's five or six segments within a mile of you. And maybe there's a, a segment 100 miles from you, it's not gonna show that one until you get close to it and then it's gonna say, hey, there's one coming up. The Garmin has them all listed and I really didn't like that. And then when I hit the first Strava live segment, the Wahoo turned on, kicked me on the live segment, shows me a really cool profile, where I am, how far up I am, my power, my lap power. I can customize that page through the app. It's awesome. The Garmin did nothing. And I was super frustrated. It's like, dude, I starred you. But then I realized that you have to actually select the Strava segment. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe there's a setting to change that to say auto spit up, you know, the segments. Uh, but I wasn't able to find that setting because the whole system is really confusing to me. Uh, but so I had to go and say I want to do this Strava Live segment. And then, even though I hate that, what was cool is it gave me a little map. It now I now have turn-by-turn -turn directions to the start of that Strava Live segment. So I was like, okay, I get that that's kind of neat. The Strava Live segment page or the interface, I much prefer with the Wahoo. It's bolder, it's more colorful, it's just, I love everything about it. As of where the Garmin is just, I don't know, and this is just familiarity probably, but I just don't, it's not as enticing to me. One big thing though is that multiple segments on the Wahoo glitch it out. I've updated this a ton. There's a segment, this big road right near me, I have four live segments starred and they all kind of coalesce in this one intersection. And I can't do any of them because they all get kicked off. So I start one and then once I go through that intersection, it kicks me off all segments. This has happened many times where I'm on a segment and then another segment's coming up and when I cross it, it kicks me off both. It doesn't give me an option to continue on one or to jump on the other. Now with the Garmin, since you have to choose which one you want to go on, that's not an issue. You know what I mean? So side by side, it's like there's pro and cons on both sides. Okay, so let's talk about the workouts. Training Peaks, you connect via Training Peaks. Very confusing to connect via the Garmin. Everything is so confusing on the Garmin. You have to go to Training Peaks' website. You have to do all this like authorization stuff. It like sends a code. It's very weird. This one is already built in, basically, so you just go to the app. You Obviously, you have to give it authorization. You gotta type in your password and stuff, but it's very simple to get the Training Peaks logged on here. It wasn't here. But once I figured it out, both of them have the workouts loaded. So Wahoo, it's the day of my workout. I turn it on, bam, there it is. I say select it, and it runs me through the workout. Now the workout is colored. Your zones are colored. You know, it's the duration is there. You can customize that whole the whole page on what you want to see. So you intervals, next intervals, time till interval, it's your power, your app, it's amazing. Your target power. The audio effort coming up. It's a hard effort. It's an easy effort. It walks you through, it's so amazing. I freaking love it. And so I really wanted to see what that was gonna be like on the Garmin. Very similar, um, but the, again, the interface, everything when I look at this isn't as pleasing to the eye. Uh, it, and again, it's just different, but everything's smaller, everything's thinner. Um, I'm not able to zoom in on the profile as of where this on the side button, I can make, you know, you've got your whole workout chart. I can zoom in and see as I'm going across zone two. Whereas of this, I wasn't able to figure it out. It had the whole chart there. And it had very limited ability to customize that workout page. 
One thing about the Garmin that was cool though is it has a calendar view. You're able to see all your whole workout for the calendar, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you can go to Thursday's workout, even though it's Monday, and say I wanna do this workout instead. Again, with that being said, they both do basically the same thing, but the ease of use and the way it looks and actually performs, I really like the Wahoo more. I just, it's, it's better on the eyes. Okay, so now let's talk about page customization. This is a big part of it. The touch screen on this is really amazing to be able to change your fields right there, just on the fly. Maybe you have a page that has four fields. You can change those fields however you want on the fly. You press long hold and uh, there, you do whatever you want. Heart rate, lap speed, lap power, three second power, elevation. I mean, you can customize it all right here on your finger. You can do the same on your Wahoo, but that's all through your phone. You can't change the data fields without your phone. You have to have your phone. That's not a huge issue for me, but maybe that is for someone else. The one thing though is that on the side here, you have these two buttons and you can take a page from one field out to 12 or down from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven. So you can customize the amount of fields you see on a page with these buttons. I didn't think that was that big of a deal until I started running this Garmin and realized that you cannot do that. If I want a page with six fields and there isn't one in the activity profile already, I'm gonna have to create a new data page. I'm gonna have to go and say, activity profile, road, create new data page, and then go through the prompt of, well, I want it to be 5A, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, right? Then go through each one of those fields and customize it by long hold, select yes. It's just a really time consuming thing to get that up and going. And then they have all these other pages that really, to me, don't seem necessary. There's like this live training partner uh, or training assistant. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. There's, there's a lot of things that you can do with this Garmin. There's one that's like a target distance or target speed or target time. And it kind of just counts down. But it's just like, I don't, why don't, I don't understand why I would need that. You could just use lap. So with your Wahoo or, and your Garmin, you can create a field that's just lap time, lap power, right? But that's what I like about this, is that I can have lap time, lap power, uh, elevation, time of day, weather, whatever. And if I just wanted to see lap time and lap power, I can just click the little side button and go to those two. That's it. And it's visually amazing because now it's really big. If I just wanted to see my power, I'm doing a 20 minute test or I'm just going as hard as I can, I can make it to where the only field on here is power. Changing the fields, I feel like is so much easier and so much more intuitive to Wahoo. Now, with that being said, this has a whole app system, which is crazy. So there's all these apps that you can load in. I downloaded a few different like power training workout pages specifically for it, which is kind of cool. I think there's a lot of potential with that, but I didn't see anything that I was like, wow, that's worth 400 bucks. You know, or man, that's a Wahoo killer. That feature is amazing. But maybe I just haven't found the right one. There's definitely more customization with the pages, your activity profiles. You can have all these activity profiles all have different pages. So you could essentially set up 50 different data pages that are all hyper customized to exactly what you want. But bro, you'd be swiping all day long. So as it comes down to just customizing the pages, I like the Wahoo better, but I can see how someone would want the Garmin because of all the features that the Wahoo doesn't have and the whole IQ app center that this connects to. But let's talk about you actually freaking using it. There's a huge glare on the Garmin. This is something I never thought was a thing. I was riding, it's super sunny, the trees are overhead, and I have them literally side by side. The, the Wahoo's perfect. I can see everything great. Even though this is shiny and clear and bright, the shadows were a huge issue. 
it, this, the screen is so reflective that it's actually really hard to see, which isn't that the whole point is you're able to see the freaking computer. And so it's really strange that a computer that's $400 that is very into navigation that you want to be able to see has the navigation page, like the roads are very thin. Uh, the screen is hyper glossy. So then it reflects a ton. The actual using of this has proved to be a little bit difficult for me. Now I'm an idiot. So you might not have any difficulty whatsoever, but when I've been using it, especially with this touch screen, I have accidentally turned on indoor, the indoor training profile, which then stopped recording my speed. It changed all my data pages. And I had no idea I did it. I was trying to just change a page and all of a sudden somehow I went home and then pressed the activity profile. I didn't even know I did it. I'm just doing this. And I'm sure that over time you get to know that a little bit better, but I think that that's probably the biggest downside is the touch screen. There are some upsides, but for the most part, you could, you, you could render your $400 Garmin completely useless if it's raining or if you're sweating and your hands are super sweaty, psych, dude. You're not gonna be able to do nothing with it. You can't swipe left or right or up or down or long hold. And that can get extremely frustrating when you are in the Hurt Locker and you're trying to just swipe to your other page to look at how bad you're suffering and it doesn't work. Now, if someone's a triathlete and they're running and they're swimming and they've got the Garmin watch maybe that whole ecosystem is able to house all that together and that there's some really neat integrations between everything you know you can download workouts for like yoga but why do i need to download a yoga workout to my cycling computer you know that i just don't understand why that's an option um and so having to like go and look for workouts and filter by swimming on my bicycle seems really strange. Now on the Wahoo, they don't have those apps. They don't even have that ability. So obviously if that's something you're interested in, you're SOL on the Wahoo. But okay, so let's just close this down, right? Again, if you're getting into a high-end computers for the first time, I really think that the Wahoo is a better option because it's a little bit easier to use straight out of the box. The connecting to the phone is just with a QR code. It's so easy. It's not like that with the Garmin. Having your fields, adjusting your fields is so easy. Even if you did nothing with it, just out of the box and you did no settings changing whatsoever, I feel like it's gonna be a much better computer than the Garmin. Now I think that the Garmin could surpass the Wahoo if you set, up, set it up right. If you put in the time, you put in the work to customize all your activity profiles, download the certain apps you want, really get familiar with how the whole thing works and didn't have touchscreen uh, or don't have hands or doesn't rain anywhere near you, you can achieve a much higher level of technology with the Garmin. But how many people are actually getting to that point? How many people are using all those extra features? Uh, how many people are putting in the time to figure out how to do all that? And so I think for, for the majority of people, the Wahoo is going to be a better buy. Uh, if I bought this for $400, I would be a little frustrated at this point. Maybe I don't get as frustrated later, but a weekend and I'm just like, Oh man, uh, it's too much, too much for me. So a huge thanks to competitive cyclist. Uh, use code VEGANCYCLE15 for 15% off your first purchase. Some exclusions may apply. They sell both of these. So if you think I'm a total idiot and you know something I don't about why the Garmin is absolutely worth 400 bucks, you can get it from them. Uh, but my recommendation would be the Wahoo Realm. But again, it could just come down to that. I'm familiar with this. All right, so a competitive cyclist said I can give this computer away. It's a $400 computer. Uh, we're going to give it away. Now, I don't want to give it away to someone who's just going to flip it on eBay. That's a douche move. I want to give it to someone who really wants it, all right? So a huge thanks to competitive cyclists for allowing me to give this computer away to someone who's going to make them a better cyclist. So I want you to email me, freegarmin at ridebikesbro.com. Give me the story. 
Give me some pictures. Tell me why you or someone you know would be so stoked to have a brand new Garmin 530. We'll go through those entries and, uh, and we'll find the best one and we'll get you out a free Garmin 530. Again, thanks a huge amount to Competitive Cyclists. They support a lot of my videos. I really, really appreciate their relationship. And uh, again, check them out. Vegan Cycle 15 code is good for 15% off your first purchase. Some exclusions may apply. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, Vegan Cyclist. You. Yeah.